Wow, guys. I really have mixed feelings about this one. Dead Man Wonderland is probably the most hit or miss anime I've seen in quite some time. There were elements that I really, really liked, and then there were things that I really, really did not quite like. Now, I would say my opinions on it are kind of mixed. Like, I don't really hate it, but I don't particularly like it either. I guess at this point, like, considering the end of the season, I guess... Yeah, like, like the end of the series, I guess, because they never made another season. Uh, considering the end of that season, I, I just like, man, there were things that I liked about it. Like, I'm just repeating myself. Again, the issue is just that this show has very serious problems. Like, th there are lots of things that I liked, but the show just falls flat in so many areas. So, what does the show do well? What, what, what does, where does it fall flat? in exactly it, it's kind of interesting just how this show almost becomes great almost becomes interesting almost becomes unique it's kind of uh from the very first time i saw it like um advertise and like see people you know saw videos of it and stuff like it came off as like this overtly violent like really ridiculous premise like a high school a, a middle school child is accused of brutally murdering his entire class. So, like, they may, it looks like a, his classroom looks like a fucking bomb went off, and he's convicted of a crime, and he's sent to this high-facility prison with, like, really, really harsh prison where, like, all, all this crazy shit goes on. Like, uh, pr inmates are, like, forced to compete in these, like, death games and, like, do all this crazy shit. Um amazingly creative premise like th that's the thing i think this show does really well is that like it establishes the characters makes most of them somewhat likable like i say somewhat likable um uh, again like there's an issue there as well but we'll, we'll get to that like it establishes likable characters with like a really interesting dilemma and it's genuinely horrifying like i watched berserk and just sort of laughed at it just how it how it was like trying too hard to be like insane Dead Man Wonderland is kind of like that too, but I would be lying if like some of these sequences weren't like even more squeamish <laughs> because of like just how how this could actually happen, you know? Just like like seeing Shinji Crow, that guy, get tied down, have his eye removed. <laughs> just like you see this, like they don't cut away or anything. Like they show you the operation and how they just rip it straight out of the socket. Really grisly, really awesome, really really good moment. Like I, I think that's the, the the show in a nutshell. Nutshell actually is that it has good moments. There are times where you really relate to these characters and really you know understand their problems and understand their issues. Like particularly the backstories. The backstories in particular, when it comes to these inmates and how they got came to be there and like their issues. Like most of them are really really interesting and really really creative. I was like you know blown away. Uh, I'm not quite blown away, like pretty impressed, but reasonably impressed with most of them. The issue, I think, uh, I'm purely judging the anime for this, is the pacing, like the plot in general. The plot is just, does not utilize the premise in an effective, interesting way. Like, it's so ridiculous how Ganta, the protagonist, uh, is inducted into this prison and immediately starts like, getting in involved with all, like, all this stupid bullshit, right? Uh, he meets Yo, who is like my favorite character for the first half of it, but he suddenly disappears for the, like, by episode 8, I think. Like, no, no, I think it was earlier than that. Like, episode 7, I think? Uh, disappears for the rest of the season. Uh, my favorite character, because like he had this really interesting shift where he was like fucking with Ganta, pretending to be his bro, and he was really spying on him for like reasons. Just like, uh, Yo was awesome. Uh, just... I don't know, that, that was the sort of thing I wanted to see more of, but instead, what it devolves into by episode 5 is the shonen fight manga bullshit. Like, I did not want this story to be about, like, Aganta fighting other people with superpowers in a prison, okay? Like, I wanted it to be about, like, this middle school kid surviving this insanely anime prison okay like doing whatever it takes like with like th th there are so many weird moments where you get the impression they put so much thought into like how this prison works and how it's presented and like 
uh, how, how exactly, why exactly it's so fucked up, but then they like just fall completely flat and go off the rails by like the next episode. So, for example, early on, Gontop is inducted, uh, takes part in this race, right? Like he's supposed to go with these, like there, there are like 40 other people, he's racing 40 other people to get to the end. Uh, there's this labyrinth, okay? Like, uh, not, not a labyrinth. It's like an obstacle course, like a ninja warrior type thing. Ganta has to go through this thing for reasons. Like, he needs cash points for, like, to buy food and shit like that. Uh, they never bring this up again, but whatever. Ganta needs that cash, okay? So, Ganta and Shiro, his um, really annoying girlfriend in this, uh, girlfriend, uh, I'll get to her in a minute. Uh, they go through this labyrinth, and it's, as it turns out, this thing is like a brutal death trap, right? Like, there are all these arrows going everywhere. Like, it, it's stuff out, it's stuff out like, like the running man. There are all these, like, a, statues, like a, uh, these little mannequin things, like shooting real arrows at inmates. Uh, they're falling into pits under giant spikes. Like, I, I think they're set on fire. Like, shit, like, crazy shit like that. Like, over and over and over again. So, Kanta, of course, survives. He beats, like, this professional MMA fighter who tried to strangle an actress. Like, somehow. And, of course, the girlfriend. Like, everybody else dies. Like, they don't matter. But Ganta and Shiro get through just fine. And th that's the, the problem I have here. Is that, like, it's just so... It doesn't really go anywhere. Like, from there, it just goes to this bullshit where, like, he has to sneak into, like... Um, he thinks he knows where, like, the guy who killed his... Uh, he thinks he knows where the guy who killed his... Uh, his classes, so he, uh, he, who, he he thinks he's in the prison. Well, he is, but uh, she is, I should say. She, he, he he thinks she's in the prison. The red man, or the red woman, or whatever, whatever the fuck he's gonna call it. Uh, he he goes try to tries to track this guy down to try and get revenge for murdering his entire class. Like, of course, Ganta is innocent during all of this. It's just like, again, just uh, no tension. On so as it turns out. Like, they established this by episode five, I think. There are several people with superpowers in the facility, in the top secret block of this facility called Block G. And those people are put into death matches with each other where they have to fight each other to the death, or at least incapacitated. Like, they, they really stress this, like, oh, you're going to have to fight the death, like, early on. But it never fucking happens. There are, like, two fights, and, like, neither of them end in the death. Like, and one of them doesn't even, like, end in, like, getting maimed. It's like, Hummingbird. Okay, so, I, I, I want to talk about Hummingbird specifically, but, uh, later on. But, this plot just has, like, this progression problem where it just cannot stay focused on anything. Like, it can't, like, it can't follow up. Like, if it follows up on something that was, like, established in an earlier episode, uh, it's really disappointing and really underwhelming. Like, I, I really want to stress this point because, uh... It really reminded me of a Professor Layton game, right? Where they come up with this insane concept, like this insane out there concept and like pose these like insane questions. Like, who is the red man? Uh, why did Ganta get, you know, uh, fucked with and sent to this prison? What, what is up with Tamaki? And, and like the all around answer to this is just like, eh, it, it's some stupid bullshit. Like, Generally speaking, like a uh, Tamaki's reasoning for uh, how Tamaki managed to fake that footage of Ganta confess confessing how he like fucking murdered his entire class and like jacked off over like uh, the girl's dead bodies or some bullshit like that. Like, oh, I hired an impersonator. It's just like so fucking stupid. And you see the impersonator, you meet the impersonator later. Um, it just like. I was the impersonator. It's like, it's not a big reveal. It's not interesting. It's just really fucking stupid. It feels like they're trying to like cover their tracks and like try to create some sort of, um, you know, some, co some cohesive narrative, but it just falls flat every single time. Like by the last episode, I did not give a shit about what was going on. Like I didn't really care about Nagi. Uh, I didn't really care about, like, this resistance. I didn't care about, like, their jailbreak attempt. I didn't care about, like, anything. And there were so many moments where, like, stuff happened where that was supposed to be, like, really intense. And, like, I didn't really give a shit about, like, where Kuroko died. Like, she she fake dies twice in this. 
like once is when you barely know her and like she's over designed as shit so you can kind of tell like i knew she was going to come back and she falls down like an entire pit and somehow survives um th that entire situation was so weird because like there was so there was no reason she should have been like in that position to begin with but they like they make it out to be like some heroic sacrifice but no she's she's back by like two episodes later and then she gets stabbed again and she's fine she escapes with like the few survivors of the resistance. It's like, I just, man, it's just like, I don't care about Nagi. I don't care about the resistance. And I certainly don't give a shit about Shiro. Like Shiro is like everything. Like, you know, those special snowflake characters that like are supposed to be like super special awesome. Like those kind of girl, those like weird wife, mysterious waifu-ish girls, you know, that like uh, Japanese creators desperately want you to like. And they have like all these like overtly cutesy traits and like uh, they, they love snacks and shit. And they're like really loyal friends. And like, they don't realize just like uh, what, 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 what a terrible situation. That, like that's what Shiro is. She is like, a manic pixie dream girl stereotype, okay? Like, this girl is just really annoying. And, like, not not, not just annoying. Like, she's really fucking stupid. Like, uh, not, not just the character. She is stupid. But, like, her entire reason for being in the story is kind of dumb. Like, everything about it is just, like, everything about her just really bothers me how she like knows kung fu how she has like the branch of sin which is like the blood superpower that everyone in this show has like how she has like you know snow white hair like how the the director of the facility like literally refers to her as his snowflake a literal fucking special snowflake and how she is spoiler alert i don't think they really come out and say this in this season but they heavily imply it I think they heavily imply it is that like she is the red man. She's the one who fucking did it. She fucking killed like why? Just just I don't fucking know. I just like ooh, I'll have to wait until season two. It's been like eight years, but pff, whatever. Um I, I don't I'm not anxious for season two at all. I I I understand that like it's going through some like legal trouble and it's probably not ever going to get made or adapted there's like some weird adaption trouble something like that i just man this show was just i, I don't know man like again there were plenty of things that i liked like again the, the premise was interesting like garantel was pretty likable and had like a fairly like well there were times where like you know um the plot like got in the way like didn't really make a whole lot of sense for his character progression like like some of his interactions with other characters was kind of weird like, like like the weirdness with hummingbird like okay so i really really want to talk about hummingbird here because hummingbird is like to me I, I don't even know her fucking name but i know she's hummingbird okay hummingbird to me is like the most obvious missed potential in this entire show because like you have this great build-up to this character right she's like this innocent looking girl who's a dead man in this prison like so she has the superpower she makes this pretty clear like from the get-go she has this superpower and like sh she leads you on to believe like pretty effectively actually is that like she's only there because like uh she has the branch of sin it's not because like she did anything wrong like the show heavily implies that like because of the way she acts and, like, the way she uh, treats Gonta and stuff like that, she's, like, not there for, like, a good reason. But, like, this is a prison. Like, she is there for a good reason. She is actually a psychopathic bitch, okay? She spends this entire fight with Gonta. Like, they end up fighting each other. Uh, the last fight in the series, uh, the last, you know, cage match. They, they fight in a little bird cage, okay? That's goofy as shit. Like, hate that. But they, they fight in this bird cage. And, like, Hummingbird... It's immediately like, ah, ha, ha, I'm actually evil. And like, she goes out and like, starts like saying all this terrible shit. Like, it's really over the top bullshit to Gonta. Like, everything vile and like cruel in this anime is taken to like extremes, okay? Like, th that's especially true with Hummingbird. She like curses all the time and like, uh, insists that like, uh, Shinji, uh, insists that like Ganta has like never been with a woman or like shit like that like uh she, 
and how like she fucking hates everything. And like then you see her over the top melodramatic backstory. Like, her hilariously melodramatic backstory. Like I, I don't want to mean like melodramatic in a bad way. Like over dramatic. Like it's so ridiculous, right? So hummingbird. Okay, so Hummingbird is Yo's brother. Like, I, I talked about Yo earlier on. He's, like, the guy who was pretending to be Gonta's bro. Uh, he comes in during the fight. Uh, the director lets him in for, like, a, so, like, the viewers can, like, uh, experience this family drama. And, like, they start, like, uh, arguing, like, because of their family issues. Uh, specifically, Hummingbird killed their father who was abusive. And, like, uh, Hummingbird thinks Yo doesn't know that. Yo is just, like... I don't give a shit. You're still my sister. I still care about you. Hummingbird has, like, attachment issues because, like, her fucking mother. Like, I cannot get over this. This is, like, I swear. This is the most over-the-top thing I think I've ever seen in any, any anime ever. So a four-year-old hummingbird is, like, hanging out with her mother in, like, a greenhouse or something like that. Uh, there, are, there are all these flowers everywhere. Like, okay. So, and then the, the, the earthquake hits. Like, uh, Tokyo in this... In this show has been like hit by a massive earthquake like 10 years ago or something like that uh tons of people get killed in it like and um t hummingbird ends up like underneath a, a huge pile of rubble like her mom like backs away uh she's not touched at all and hummingbird is like lying on the ground like completely out of it just like mother help me and then like her mother comes up reaches down towards her and then like grabs the primroses right next to her and like runs off with those instead. <laughs> just like, I was just like, holy fucking shit. That's so over the top. It's so ridiculous, but it's so horrible at the same time. Like, you really get the impression that you understand why Hummingbird is so fucked up and why she has like these really weird family issues and why she's so like, violent okay and so out of it so insane okay they, they spend a lot of time hashing this out but the resolution is just so lame like oh, oh not, not really okay so halfway lame okay so the basically the way Garta deals with her is alpha as fuck i was i was not expecting this from Ganta, considering he's like he has the highest pitched voice of any anime protagonist i've ever seen in my life uh Ganta, despite his like really high-pitched screeching voice is actually really fucking badass like holy fucking shit he puts that bitch in her place he's just like hey hummingbird fuck you and then he like fucking headbutt he like talks so much shit to her like this wouldn't actually work this wouldn't this wouldn't be what i would do but he talks so much shit to her about her bitchy attitude and about how she's treating yo and like uh, treating this fight in general, that she's, like, completely taken aback by it. And she does nothing as he walks up to her and fucking heads but headbutts her, like, right in the fucking skull. Like, badass as shit. Like, it was dumb. Like, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. But holy fucking shit, was that badass. It doesn't really go anywhere from there. Like, Hummingbird, from that point forward, isn't really relevant. She's, like, you see some shots of her, like, hanging around. Like, she's in that room with like all the flowers for some reason she takes care of primroses specifically like why i i, I don't i don't whatever I, I would think she would fucking hate primroses but anyway uh hummingbird is just like you see some shots of her like hanging around uh she was almost uh she's part of like this weird moment like to establish the resistance where like a she's about to get her organs harvested or whatever the fuck they do. And like, they're trying to decide what body part they take away. And then the resistance is like, Ganta, Ganta for some reason. Okay. So this, this is like one of the things I fucking hate about God. I, I hate about the situation is that Ganta treats hummingbird. Like she's his friend. Like, you know how like Naruto, I keep bringing this back to Naruto, but this is like a really good example. We're like Naruto, you, you know how he's like super obsessed with like rescuing Sasuke or rescuing Sasuke and, like, making him come back to the village and, like, them being best bros again, even though they never were to begin with. Like, it's sort of like that, but I, I don't know. Like, Sasuke and Naruto, like, I would argue that they um, they fell apart way too soon uh, or, or whatever. Like, they weren't really on – they weren't – they didn't really do that much shit together anyway. They were, like, did what? Like, maybe two missions together? Like, fucking whatever. Like, Ganta treats Hummingbird like that, even though she's a complete psycho bitch. And he keeps make he keeps doing this thing where, like, he keeps sticking his neck out 
for this psychopathic bitch for like no like it, the implic the implication from the very very beginning is that the reason he's doing this is because he desperately wants to bang her like from the very beginning it's so obvious like how, even yeah before and after they fight like ganja treats her like she's a love interest like he does all this weird shit for her like i'll never forgive this hummingbird like what the fuck is like i'll never uh, I'll never forget this hummingbird. Like he does this shit to her. Like he bitches about her, like um, having this organ harvest, and he's just like, I gotta go save. Keep in mind, he just beat the shit out of her. He's the reason she's in that position to begin with. But he's just like, no, I have to fucking save her. I have to go down there and just be like, uh, kick some ass and take names. But like, Nagi, uh, base Nagi, he's just like, hey, bro. I like short hair on a woman. And, like, he, he rigs the machine. So it fucking... So the body part they remove is her hair. So they, like, just... They just give her this, like, really tomboyish, like, a short haircut, you know? And and then, like, Ganta's just like, fuck yeah. No, just kidding. Like, th that's what I'm talking about. That's what Ganta's talking about. Ganta approves. Ganta's dick approves. And, like, she saves somebody, like... By that, after that point, she's, like, a standard Sandire. Like, she's a fucking psychopathic bitch, okay? Who, like, has these weird issues. Like, really interesting, weird issues. And they just sort of shaft it. Like, from this point forward, she's just like, Ganta, fucking idiot. I, I, I wouldn't suck your dick even if you wanted me to. Like, whatever. Baka. Stupid Baka. Just, it, that, that sort of bullshit, you know? It, it's just like, wow, what a waste of a character. Like, Yo kind of disappears after that point. Like, from this point onward, it's entirely about this resistance. Like, this really stupid group of people. Uh, this really needs to be talked about. Like, I don't understand this at all. Like, for some reason, this is supposed to be a prison. Like, a high-facility, privately-owned, like, privatized prison with, like, all this crazy bullshit going down. Uh, but... Okay, for one thing, the warden doesn't do anything in this entire show. Like, she exists, and, like, she she's, like, she's established as being this, like, no-nonsense kind of person, but she doesn't do shit for this entire series. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Shit. <laughs> I got off the track of that. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, for some unexplained, asinine reason, pretty much everyone, especially in G-Block, in G-Block, have this weird freedom to go anywhere and do whatever they want like uh, shenji can like train ganta to like use his powers to, like um you know reach new levels like become a super saiyan a super saiyan basically like this, this super op power that's way more op than you might uh, suspect early on just i just man there are so many times here where i was just like sitting here like why are they allowed to do this why are they allowed like, why is this prison with, like, high-profile death row inmates have these, like, easily accessible, like, ventilation shots? There are so many times where, like, Shiro, like, comes bursting through, like, a ventilation shaft and, like, hits someone. Uh, I need to bitch about Shiro specifically. But, uh, she does this, like, I don't know, like, five or six times. Like, she comes the fuck out of nowhere, like, all the fucking time and, like, does this shit all the time. Like, I, I just... Enough is enough, okay? It's just like, Shira, just like, holy fucking shit. Like, Yo does it a couple of times. And the resistance, you know, the people who are organizing to, like, uh, to break into the outside and, like, shut this prison down because, like, it really is, like, this hellhole. They established this pretty well. This really terrible fucking place. Hell on earth. Uh, they are allowed to just hang out in a bar and just, like, talk about their plans and, like, just talk about how, like, uh, they're going to do this thing, right? How they're going to, like, break out of this prison. And it's just, like, so fucking stupid. Like, no prison would ever let this happen, okay? Like, uh, they, they tried to give, like, an explanation that, like, ooh, they had a spy the entire time. The, the data chip was a ruse. But, like, it doesn't change the fact that, like, the entire idea of, like, prisoners hanging out in a bar... And talking about, like, doing all this shit is, like, uh, going to be allowed. Like, especially since, like, The Undertaker is the uh, anti-dead man. Uh, another problem with this show is that they establish, like, dead men. They, they establish, like, dead men and then, like, never really establish what dead men can do. So, like, you, you – and then they establish, like, Undertakers who are, like, 
the anti dead man who are like supposed to like uh, the guys in charge of like fucking them over if they act out like again it's just it's just really fucking stupid like there are so many times where like the undertakers are like have the guys on their ropes for some reason they just let them go for no apparent reason like they just go away and then they just like let Ganta do whatever like sometimes like it doesn't really make any sense like they they kidnap Nagi and like brainwash him to like do all this terrible shit like I just uh man Man, like, Nagi really should have been a more likable character. Like, again, Nagi had, like, an interesting premise. Like, he had a pregnant wife who was fucking killed in front of him. And, like, as it turns out, like, I'm going into spoiler territory here because, like, Nagi is kind of one of the final bosses of this anime, uh, this season of the anime, this one season of the anime. Nagi, like, his thing is that, like, he's been driven to despair because of, like, all the losses he's had over, like, uh, his entire stay in this prison, like, really fucked up bullshit, like, it really, really should have been more interesting than it was, like, his relationship with, like, a, the black chick, like, the, the Costco-looking chick, like, she really does look just like that, but maybe I'm just being stupid, because, like, all these dark anime chicks look the same to me, but, uh, Casca, Rokuro, uh, Kuroko, I'm sorry, uh, Rokuro is the traitor, uh, Kuroko, the nurse, like, that chick, like, apparently they have, like, some weird friendship, and just, like, it doesn't really go anywhere, and just, like, uh, I, I don't really care about them at all. Like, I mostly care about Ganta, and Yo, and Hummingbird, and Crow to an extent. Like, Crow! I, I don't understand Crow at all, man. Like, they established him, like, early on as, like, he's the first dead man that, like, um, Ganta meets, and, like, he's the one he fights, and, like, you didn't, I, I didn't really think they established this early on, but apparently Crow is, like, one of the most high-profile, like, strongest inmates. Like, he's not the absolute strongest dead man. That is Mockingbird, who's, like, I don't even know what the fuck to make of Mockingbird or why he is significant. Like, I, I say he. I'm just, like, every time I see Mockingbird and how he acts and how he, like, um, does shit and, like, his voice. He, there's no way he's not voiced by a woman, by the way. Like, Mockingbird, like, seems like a female character to me. And I'm just like, what? I, I just I just don't get it. Like, motherfucker, just fucking bullshit. I, I, I don't really, you know, understand Mockingbird at all. Like, are they going to explain this ever? I don't, I don't fucking think so. It's just like, wow, what, what a complete mess. Just, I don't know. Like, not only do I not understand what, who Mockingbird is... I also don't really give a shit, because, like, the character comes out of nowhere, it does, he does, I keep calling it it, like, he does some, like, stupid, stupid gay bullshit, and, like, he has, like, he talks to Shiro about bullshit, like, I just, like, I don't care, uh, oh, I did not bitch about Shiro, I need to bitch about Shiro, like, the worst thing about this anime, by far, is Shiro, and just, who do his ex machina bullshit, like, there are so many times, like, man, special, oh, did I already talk about Shiro? I, I think I did, actually. Uh, special snowflake bullshit, like, I think I did, actually. Um, did I go into depth? Like, um, yeah, I think the main issue is, like, the entire plot revolves around her, when she's not a particularly interesting or, like, creative character. Like, compared to, like, some of these other guys, you know, like, even Crow, who, like, is very underutilized, like, Hummingbird was way more interesting, I think. Like, Shiro is in, like, pretty much every episode. Like, uh, I don't think the first one. Like, she, she's in every episode after two. And, like, that, that, that's one of the reasons um, Gata doesn't fuck off by the end. He's like, Shiro's here, too. Like, I don't, I don't understand why. Like, what? I, I, I just don't really. <sighs> I just did not care about the overall plot for this. And that's kind of a shame because, like, the setting was so unique. They had so many cool ideas. Like, the blood power in general is, like, really, really cool. It's just, like, really, they didn't go far enough. Like, they didn't make it, they didn't go far enough to make it interesting. Like, they introduced this, like, weird shonen battle manga element where it didn't really need to be there. Like, all it really, all this anime really needed to do was be a really, really good, unique, brutal prison drama. Like, have these characters, have them with their crazy backstories. Like, uh, but don't have them fight each other with superpowers. <laughs> like, if you're going to have superpowers, fine. But, like, incorporate them well. 
like I don't feel like the powers are all that ex are, are, are explained all that well or used all that interesting. Well, Gantas is, but like everyone else is just kind of everyone else just kind of has them and they don't really explain it very well. I just I just man I I don't know whether to be disappointed with this game or to be like uh, it's about what I expected. Like, or better than I expected. Because I was expecting, there were times where I, I was watching this early on. or And even, like, w within the last few episodes where I was like, am I enjoying this? Do I like this? this? This isn't good, but, like, I'm tolerating it. Like, this is, like, the most mixed I felt about anything for a really long time. Like, I can see why people kind of like this anime. Like, I, I can see the, the appeal. Like, I can see you know, why people like it. Like, I understand, you know, it's audience. I understand it's demographic. I understand, like, you know, why people would be interested in something like this. I also understand why people don't like it. I understand, like, it's pointlessly, like, brutal. Like, when I say it's pointlessly brutal, like, I mean its brutality has no point. Like, it has that death game in, like, episode three, like, that, that death race thing. Uh, doesn't really go anywhere like no, no, no one important dies like you have the warden chick she doesn't do anything like, she fucks up yo in like episode two i think it is uh with a sword doesn't really go anywhere she never does anything again like neither does yo really aside from like the hummingbird thing like uh just like pfft. uh there, there are just so many times like that where like the plot goes off the rails about like with like uninteresting bullshit like I just really, I, I don't know. Like when this game, when this show, I said game, when this show was like brutal and like effectively brutal, like it worked exceedingly well. Like this game, like that moment and like the trial where Ganta is like being sentenced to like a lifetime conviction, like a, to, to fucking death row in Dead Man Wonderland or whatever. And like, uh, you know, he's insisting that he's innocent. Like, he's insisting that, like, his lawyer lawyer defend him. Like, uh, you don't under you don't know that, like, Tamaki is, uh, you know, the, 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 the director's son of, like, the Dead Man Wonderland. Like, at that point. Like, at that point, he's just a lawyer, right? Uh, Tamaki completely fucks him over. And, like, uh, there's this community. Like, eventually, Ganta sees fo video footage of him, like, talking about how he was, like, how, like, he's going to kill everyone. How he killed everyone. Like, it was just, like, so... It, 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 it really did seem like it was over the top and ridiculous, but in that way that, like, felt like, you know, something that could have actually happened. Like, you could see this, like, actually happen. And, of course, like, he, he sent to this, like, really horrible facility, and, like, all this terrible shit happens, and it's just, like... Man. Just un Like... That moment was, like, really powerful. It worked really, really well. It's just, like, again, th this is a show that has, like, good moments. They just don't, like, blend together very well. They just don't, you know, amount to much, really. I I, I don't know. That, that's my main problem with it, I think. Uh, the, the visuals are great. Like, I, I like most of the animation. There are times where, like, it's kind of lazy. But, like, most of it is pretty good. Like, I, I like the blood effects in particular. I think the blood might be the best I've ever seen in anime. Uh, I, I can't really think of anything I have, I have um, that's ever... There are so many instances where they, like, creatively use blood in this show. Well, for one thing, like, the characters actually use blood as, like, a power. So maybe they emphasize that for this show. Like, the, the splatter effects look great. Like, that, that scene in the beginning where, like, the, the red man, uh, Shiro, like, fucking kills fucking kills um, Ganta's entire class. Like, that was fucking horrifying, man. There's, like, blood everywhere. Like, Ganta's friends, who, who, he's, who he was just talking with, are fucking, uh, their heads are rolling on the floor. Like, it looks brutal as shit. And, like, it's really effective at, like, uh, really emphasizing just how terrible it is. Like, you know? I, I just, the problem is that there's not really a point to it. It just sort of happens. Like, there's no real explanation offered. Like, the plot doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. I just, uh, I, I don't know. Like, again, I'm not, like, holding my breath for a season two. Like, I'm not, like, a, I'm not going to be, like, yeah, th this needs to have a season two right now. I need to see how the story ends. Like, I really don't give a shit, like, at all. I just, like, but at the same time, I didn't 
mind watching the show either. Like there were times where like I groaned at how ridiculous it was. I just, but there were also other times that like I really related to these people. Like there are times, like there, there are so many times in this, like way more effectively than an Evangelion, by the way, where like Ganta is so overwhelmed by what's going on. He can't like do anything, but like he gets through it anyway. And like, I, I do respect him for that. Like you get the impression, like he's really overwhelmed by like everything that's going on. Like again, way more, more effectively than like uh, Evangelion, the, uh, per portrayed like this show to its credit portrays overwhelming situations way way better than Evangelion ever did I just man Dead Man Wonderland is just I don't want to say it's completely missed potential but I, I do I do think um, I, I would really want to watch an anime a prison anime like this like uh, well it's weird to say uh, considering I just you know, watched one, but like, yeah, remove the supernatural element, remove like some of the pointless bullshit, like make the characters more fleshed out and interesting, like make the plot line better, but, but keep the, like, keep the protagonist, like keep the, the, you know, the protagonist, like, uh, you know, the innocent man plot line, keep that aspect to it and like have this over the top, like insanely brutal facility, like where they can do all this evil shit, like that was interesting to me. Like, that to me was worth slogging through the... I don't want to say this was a slog, because again, I didn't hate this show. It just wasn't, like, my favorite thing ever. I didn't particularly like it or care for it or anything like that, but I didn't hate it either. Oh, man. 35 minutes of me rambling about this. Uh, I don't think anybody cares about this anime. Like, this is just one of those things that, like, I saw once, and I was just like, ah, I kind of want to see what this, this thing is like. It's... I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about the show at all, like, ever. So, like, I, I came into this, like, completely blind, other than, like, what I saw in, like, previews and stuff. Th this show is just, man, I, I would love to see, like, a prison anime, you know, another prison anime, like, a really, really good one. Like, if there is one that I don't know of, uh, please recommend it to me, because I, I really do want to watch it. <laughs> like, if it's really good, like... I, I could see something like this being really successful and being really interesting. Like, um, I, I don't think this is something that's really been done before. Like, I might be wrong on that. Uh, I hope I'm wrong on that because I really do want to watch something like this. But I, I just, I, I just feel like this show really should have been a lot better. Like, in spite of its, it's like really positive qualities, it also fell short, way short in a lot of areas. Like, the villains. I, I, I didn't talk about the villains. I want to talk about the villains a little bit. The villains, like, the rock star monk. He's, like, this Buddhist guy who's, like, obsessed with rock and roll. And, like, death will set you free, man. And it's just, like, really terrible villain for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, specifically, they don't really explain his motivations that well. Like, his obsession with Nagi in particular. Like, why he does certain things. Like, where the whole rock and roll thing even came from. Like, they explain his, like, Buddhist background and, like, how he fucked, how he, like, came to believe in, like, a, uh, probably one of the lamer backstories, but it, it's still, it's still, it's still kind of interesting, but, like, um, his partner is, like, this eight-year-old girl. Like, again, another missed opportunity. She has, like, this insane, she had this insanely, she had, she had this insane mom who was, like, insanely strict with her and, like, insisted she had to behave like a lady. But, like, a lady in her eyes was, like, to be a brutal murderer. So, like, th this little girl, like, thinks she has to, like, murder people, like, um, or whatever. Like, she's a fucking psycho. Like, uh, again, really interesting, but they don't really do anything with this character. Like, she's fucking, she's fucking defeated by Nagi. And then, like, she shows up again, like, towards the end. And she's like, like oh, I, I can't do this. I don't want to put up with you anymore. She fucks off for no adequately explained reason. And then I think she's fucking axed off by Mockingbird. They don't show it. For some reason, yeah, the show that will, like, show an eyeball getting plucked out of its socket, like, in great detail, will not show an eight-year-old girl. Like, uh, like, second grade. Yeah, yeah, that would be an eight-year-old, right? Uh, will not show an eight-year-old girl getting fucking axed off by a fucking psychopathic bitch. Oh, Mockingbird. Keep calling him a her. Like, that... that Thing really does look like a girl like really does look like a woman like to me like just like really confusing i just uh <laughs> i just mockingbird fucking, fucking ridiculous um 
yeah, just, yeah, the Undertakers were not all that interesting. Again, this goes back into, like, my problem with the pacing is that, like, Ganta is, like, his first confrontation with, like, the Monk dude, man, uh, the guy with the guitar, like, uh, Ganta fires off a shot at him, and, like, um, th this is in plain sight of everyone else, by the way, but, like, um, he, like, deflects the blow with, like, his Undertaker technology. They don't really explain how this works, but apparently Undertakers have, like, the, abil uh, the ability to, like, dispel dead men blood with their, like, weapons, and that's what makes them so dangerous to dead men. So Ganta, like, fires off a, a, Ganta, a shot of his Ganta gun at this guy, and he, like, deflects it. And then, like, there's this big, big deal where, like, Ganta is just, like, he deflected my shot. How is that possible? And, like, the resistance is, like, what? How, what? Like, he did that? Like, that's not possible. You can't deflect dead man shots. And then, like, this guy, the traitor guy, uh, Rokuro, I think his name is, he's just, like, that's fucking retarded, Ganta. See, I'll play back the footage. He just dodged it. He didn't dispel shit. Like, they make a big deal about this, about how, like, uh, the resistance doesn't actually know anything about the Undertakers, and then they, they just uh, don't really do anything with that. Like uh, they just they just establish that like ooh the Undertakers can actually deflect them, dispel blood, and like that's apparently a big deal. Like it wasn't a big deal at all, and like they 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 spent so much time like you know emphasizing this point, and it's, it's just like it was so fucking stupid. Um, there, there were so many moments like that. Like, that moment where, like, Shiro takes the data chip and throws it into, like, a, a bunch of fire. And, like, Ganta is pissed at, the, at her because, like, he thought it was, like, a it was something important. So, the thing about the data chip, the thing about this scene is that, like, the, the, the fire, she, Shiro shuts the door and, like, the door fucking explodes. Like, the, an explosion happens inside that room, okay? Uh, obviously so. Like, immediately after she throws the data chip in, like, I was sitting here like, whoa, the data chip was a bomb. Like, they, they don't explain, the show doesn't explain it to, to why she does this, but that's why she does it. And I was expecting God to, like, come to the same conclusion, but no, apparently he's under the impression that data chips fucking explode when thrown into fire. So, like, he, like, fucking punches Shiro. It's, like, this really terrible, like, the one time I actually feel sh sorry for Shiro, by the way, because she really did nothing wrong in that instance. Like, she was just like, Gonza, why? And then, like, they keep doing this drama, like, this weird drama with, like, Shiro and Gonza and, like, their weird history together. Just, they, they don't really explain it, but, like, Shiro is, like, obsessed with Gonza for some fucking reason. Yeah, I, I just, like... It's just so dumb. It doesn't really go anywhere. It's not particularly interesting. And it's just, it's just like when there's drama between them, and, and there's a lot of it. Like when there's drama between them, it feels so forced, like so artificial. Like, well, besides the first time, like the first time they fight, it's because of, it's because, it's because like Ganta is like, all of my friends are dead, and Shiro is just like. What? But I am your friend, and I'm still alive. Does that mean you don't consider me your friend? And it's just like that sort of bullshit. Like um, th that was the good moment too. That was the moment I actually kind of enjoyed because it kind of emphasized what kind of person Shira was. Uh, but like for the most part, when they fight, it's like over trivial, stupid bullshit. Like uh, I don't fucking know. Like I don't want you to get hurt, Shira. Just. I don't know, like, shit. I'm pretty sure Shiro was the strongest fucking character in Dead Man Wonderland, just, uh, considering just her character archetype and just the kind of bullshit she's shown doing on, like, a regular basis, like, kicking robots, like, taking out an entire tower of guys, just, like, uh, I'm pretty sure she could have fucked up that MMA guy. But she didn't actually have to do it, but I think she could have. Uh, just, man, I just do not like Shiro at all, like, as a plot device at all, like, maybe if she was, like, a, you know, a side character, but no, she really is meant to be, like, the secondary protagonist, the Deutrogonist, like, you know, the second main character, like, behind Ganta, she's really supposed to be, like, this really important, like, plot pivotal person, you know, uh, but it's just, I don't know, every moment with her, especially when she's, like, not with Ganta, is just, like, really really dumb, okay, it doesn't work, it doesn't, like, 
Okay, okay. Like the one moment that kind of works is when like uh, it establishes that she has like split personality disorder or something like that, where she's just like she has like another personality for some reason. Like they don't. She never does it again. Like she does it once. And apparently it was that personality that fought, like, the, that killed God, doesn't like, like, whatever. Like, it's just, like, they establish it, and then they don't really, really foreshadow it at all. I just, I, I just like, man, it's so dumb. It really is. I just, everything about Shiro kind of bothers me. Everything about, like, the overarching plot kind of bothers me. Like, senseless sacrifices that don't amount to much, like, they, they make a big deal about this, re this resistance thing, but, like, 90% of them fucking die. Like, something like three people get out of, like, there were, like, what, 20 there? 20, 15? Um, yeah, Gonzo was right when he called that resistance a bunch of fucking fags because, like, Nagi didn't know what he was doing. Like, none of these people knew what they were doing. Just, ah, oh, man, kind of pathetic. But Kokoro got out. Uh, who else got out? Like, yeah. Those other people that I don't really give a shit about. Like, I don't even know who these people were, okay? Like, they all look so generic. They had that, like, a full metal alchemist sort of, like, generic citizen look to them, you know? Like, was it was this made by the same studio? I, I think it was. Because, like, eh, whatever. I need to watch. I need to finish full metal alchemist. But anyway, like, I, I, I was watching this, and I was just like, okay, this happened. This is a this is a thing that happens. I'm just like, ah, man. They, they go from plot point to plot point and just you know don't really do a whole lot interesting with like any of them. Like Tamaki, we, we're still not entirely sure why Tamaki. Um, ah, man, just ah, man. Again, I, I'm rambling about this. Like I'm just rambling about like inane plot points that don't really that I'm sure are explained in season two and I, I'm sure are disappointing explanations. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize just how much I did not like this show. Okay. How many issues I had with the show, how many problems I had with it, how much stuff I liked it. Was there anything else I wanted to say? Um man, okay, so would you be interested in seeing Dead Man Wonderland? Uh, if you're into like overtly violent bullshit like, you're probably going to like this. Like, if you're interested in, like, seeing a lot of blood, a lot of bullshit situations, like, a lot of brutal situations, like, you'll probably reasonably like this anime for what it is. Like, it has tons of problems, but, like, I didn't hate it either. Like, there were times where I was kind of interested in seeing what would happen next and what would, um, you know, what the characters would do next and, like, what would happen and stuff like that. Like, I, I guess a show like that is can't be considered bad, you know? Like, there was never a time, like, watching this where I was just, like, I, I just can't watch this anymore. I can't do this anymore. No, I, I kept watching it, and, like, it wasn't my favorite anime ever, but you know what? It was pretty okay. Like, it was middle of the road. Like, not bad, not good. It was just Dead Man Wonderland.